Thank you so much for joining us for these ASP chats. We are spending the month of January talking about the transition between the Trump administration and the Biden administration. Uh, we're really excited to get your perspective. You know, being that you were a governor and then a senator, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to uh, go through transitioning your government? And can you have any suggestions or insights for the Biden administration? Well, uh, transitions are really important. Uh, David Gergen wrote a book. You know, David Gergen worked for four presidents, two Republican, uh, three Republicans and a Democrat. He wrote a book uh, a couple of years ago about uh, uh, the presidency and, and what he observed. His first lesson was a good transition is crucial to a, a good administration uh, and that it, it's very important to get off on the right foot and to have full access and a smooth handoff. And of course, this time we've had anything but that. Uh, and that's going to that's going to be damaging. It's going to hurt everything from the vaccine rollout to a foreign policy uh, to uh, establishing, you know, what the economic situation is. Uh, and it's really unfortunate. My position all along was, look, if Donald Trump wanted to contest the election, he could do that and provide for a smooth transition. Uh, but it's not surprising if you read the books about the early part of the uh, uh, the Trump administration, he didn't even want a trans transition. In fact, he fired Chris Christie, who was his transition director. So uh, we're having a rocky time right now, and I'm afraid it will be damaging uh, to the country. On the other hand, the people Joe Biden has around him are very experienced, very knowledgeable, and I've been impressed with the uh, quality of the people that I've been in touch with over the past month or so. That's a great answer. I so the, the, the Senate has an important job of confirming cabinet nominees. Can you describe the Senate confirmation process? And will this divided government affect that process? Well, I, I certainly hope not. Uh, my philosophy as a senator has always been, I basically have two standards in confirmations. One is for the cabinet. I think that barring some really bad qualification, and I'll elaborate that on a minute in a minute, the president should be able to pick their own team. They're there for the same time that the president is, and my standard was and is, as long as the person is not hostile to the mission of the agency to which they've been appointed, I'll support them. Now, when Donald Trump first came in, he brought in a guy named Scott Pruitt at the EPA, who was hostile to the EPA. I voted against him. Betsy DeVos at Education is hostile to uh, public education. I voted against her. But many of the others I voted for because, again, I think the president or the governor has the right to build their own team. Judges, I have a different standard because judges' tenures outlive the president. Judges in our country, federal judges, are lifetime tenure. So I think the, the sort of benefit of the doubt that the president gets to pick whoever they want is not the case and that you really need to dig into qualifications, background, judicial philosophy, and I voted for many fewer Trump judges uh, because I just didn't feel that they were qualified. In the new administration, what two federal agencies do you expect to see some of the biggest changes in? Well, certainly, I think one of them will be the Department of Defense, because in the last month, the president has essentially uh, purged uh, the entire civilian leadership at, at the department and put in uh, his loyalists. For what reason, I don't really understand. But he fired the, uh, the Secretary of Defense and then fired a bunch of other uh, people in, in policy under the Secretary of Defense, put in a lot of people. So that's going to be a, a, a dramatic change. President-elect Biden has already uh, notified us that his intended Secretary of Defense is, is retired General Austin, who I met with uh, virtually, I must say, a, about a week ago. Very impressive guy. He was the CENTCOM commander in Europe. He's like a 30-year veteran. Uh, of the military, maybe even more than that, maybe 40 years. But I was very impressed by his grasp of foreign policy and his grasp of the magnitude of that of that job. So defense is certainly going to be a great change. Uh, EPA will be a great change because it's been staffed by people who, as I mentioned, don't believe in the mission of the agency. So hopefully uh, that one will be changed substantially. Uh, those are two that I can think of uh, right offhand. The State Department is a third. Between uh, Rex Tillerson and Mike Pompeo, the State Department has really been hollowed out. Uh, a lot of the professionals have left. A lot of the skilled uh, people with experience have left. And uh, that's going to be a major rebuilding job uh, at the Department of State. Those are, those are three, I would say, 
uh, will probably experience some of the greatest change. Sure. Now, you're a member of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, which will be responsible for vetting and uh, advancing the president-elect's energy secretary. What is the role of the energy secretary? Well, that's a really good question because uh, there's, there's some confusion on that score. Uh, it's not exactly what it sounds like. Clearly, a major part of the, the Department of Energy's responsibility is energy and energy policy, and particularly energy research. I think one of the most important agencies or functions in the federal government is, is fundamental research. Research that doesn't necessarily have an immediate payoff, and that's why the government has to do it, not private enterprise. So the research function of the Department of Energy is very important. What a lot of people don't realize, and I think frankly, some of the people that came in under President Trump, the, the Department of Energy also has fundamental responsibility for our nuclear uh, arsenal. Uh, not the military part, not the bombs that are on airplanes, but everything else. Uh, the manufacture of the nuclear weapons, the, uh, the storage, the repurposing, the, uh, all of the, uh, the sort of fundamental of our nuclear deterrent, it rests in the Department of Energy. So you know, talk about a major important responsibility, and then a, a responsibility that sort of crosses the two lines between uh, nuclear, uh, uh, the nuclear part, portion and energy are the national labs. We have these national labs, uh, Lawrence Livermore, uh, Sandia, Los Alamos, uh, I'm going to forget some, Idaho National Lab, Oak Ridge and Tennessee, that are absolute gems that are doing enormously important work. I visited several of them in terms of helping us to move into the, to the, to the future. Uh, as you all know, technology is, is, is the whole deal. And the work that they're doing is very advanced on the grid and on uh, energy storage and all of those things that are critical uh, to the future. So the Department of Energy is a, is a very important agency. Thanks for joining us, Senator. We hope to okay. see you. Hey. Thanks very much. Good to be with you guys. Thanks for what you're doing, by the way. It's a major public service. A major public service. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We yep. appreciate it. Take care, Senator.